Hello, welcome uh, to this studio release and greetings from Carl Berner in Oslo. Today I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to show you four works that are made to, uh, in one in one take, you, you might say, uh, and with one um, idea. But they are individual works. They are meant to be shown separately. I feel so. In, uh, I will show you this first work, and then I will take it down and put up the next one, and then the next one. And, four works after each other and then we can finish. I could put them all by the floor and you could look at them a little bit uh, together also. But they are supposed to be individual works even though they are made uh, with the same uh, uh, conceptual idea. Um, yes, uh, so this is number 320 to 23 and the title of these works are just Res Ipsa. And uh, Res Ipsa is, um, is my compilation of works that are made uh, directly in the wet filler. Uh, and um, um, Res Ipsa means uh, the thing in itself, uh, which of course is the famous uh, concept by, um, that introduced by um, Immanuel Kant, um, which means, I guess, uh, um, how that there's a difference between how the world is um, outside the realm of perception and how we perceive things. There's kind of a gap there, there's two different things and that we really can't experience things over the world uh, as it is in itself. Because when we use the apparatus of uh, perception which is a sort of a, um, um, a sort of a, um, mechanics of, of a language, you might say. It's a sort of a filter. Uh, we have to understand and uh, things and uh, conceptualize them to kind of perceive them. Uh, so, what we experience is more our inner idea of what we're, what our senses are telling us, more than the actual thing outside of our senses. Um, so that's Res Ipsa, but of course an artwork um, is also within, um, it's not a thing in itself, it's also, as, uh, as all other things, um, um, perceive, uh, we, we, we sense it through our perception. Uh, so no, there is no difference there in, in a way, but I believe that maybe like very good artworks can in a sense challenge this uh, um, um, perception apparatus that we have uh, and we have to kind of tune it and, and change it a little bit. We see, we see something but we don't really understand it, it's something strange, something off, off with it. Um, but in the same uh, time we could be appealed or appalled or, or uh, in any way um, uh, moved by it and, and in that way it can uh, force us some to, to, to slightly change and grow and develop our um, perception. Um, and this thing that is off-center that we cannot, cannot really uh, grasp at the beginning when we see a good and interesting uh, or challenging artwork, that is sort of, I believe, the, the thing in itself, the, the real, as Lacan says, uh, that kind of seeps a little bit into this artwork or we can get a glimpse of it somehow, maybe. But I use this term recipsa because it's a part of a, a juridical uh, term called recipsa locutor, which means the thing speaks for itself. Um, and that's why, I, because I believe that um, every artwork, in a sense, is an evidence uh, for something that had happened. There have been art has been committed. Uh, you might say, uh, so, and every artwork is, is more of a document of that thing that happened that made, made the artwork. Um, and this, I think, is kind of a, a fruitful way of looking at doing art. Um, yes, so I made these four works with a special tool that I have devised. 
it looks like this. You might have seen it on my Facebook page. Uh, it's a simple uh, piece of wood uh, with five holes in it. Uh, and for the first, and I have put uh, pegs in them. Uh, and for the first um, uh, artwork, I had just two pegs. And then for the next one, I had three pegs, and then four pegs, and finally five pegs. Uh, and the reason I used this, uh, this uh, device was because I wanted to do... First, I must say, I, I, what I wanted to do with this artwork was kind of... I wanted to draw and uh, to make an artwork. Um, not so much as... So usually, I have a f f sort of... A, I invent sort of a method or a, uh, have, a, have an idea that kind of results in the artwork in itself. So I don't have to kind of um, invent what I'm doing or, or uh, take any um, uh, aesthetic decisions when I do the artwork. Um, I usually kind of try to, to avoid this, but now I felt that I wanted to do it. I wanted to do more like a regular artwork in a sense, um, a, a drawing. Um, because I enjoy nice, um, abstract artworks um, uh, very much. So I wanted to do something like that. But uh, of course I had to um, make it a little bit more difficult for myself. So with this, um, the, 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 the natural flow from the head to the, to the eyes and to the, to the hand and onto the canvas, or the panel in my in my um, case, is kind of obstructed by this because usually you have just one line to the artwork and you draw with that, but with this, suddenly there are several lines and none of them are kind of directly in your hand, and also I could like when I draw I could twist this I kind of um, make the lines complex in a way and. Uh, a little bit hard to kind of um, anticipate what is going on actually you just see it when you see it and then it's done um, yeah so this was um, um, the, the method and um, well uh, I, I find it interesting with these things that are kind of beside the center the things that are peripheral in a way because it's usually there in the per periphery, um, uh, we can find what's really interesting because what is this in, this in the center of our attention is usually very much uh, shaped by our uh, pre, um, preconceived vision of preconceived ideas of what to, what to see and what to expect. So we are seeing more what we already have inside ourselves, but the things that are in the periphery, uh, not so much, they can suddenly we get a glimpse of something in the peripherals and uh, it can, um, to me, somehow it's a more true vision. And all, uh, when I, before when I start, studied art and made like more uh, regular kind of artworks where you do something and you look at the canvas and then you kind of try to uh, develop the, uh, the painting uh, more and more and, and make it better and better. Um, one of the tricks I used was to kind of look at the artworks in some somewhat distorted way, maybe through a mirror or looking at it from the upside or even better, just kind of look at it very fast. I was walking through the room and looking at that like in the peripheral vision. Uh, so this was kind of tricks I used to kind of see something new in it and perceive it in a different way so, so I could move the paintings forward. Yeah, um, so um, yeah, let's just look at this first work and uh, I will talk a little bit of it and then I will just move on and show you the other ones. So this is number um, 320, Res Ipsa. Yes, and as you can see here, there are like two, two lines here. 
and I did like this first. And this is a little bit more complicated. It's just uh, started out like this and moved down something like that, I guess. Uh, and I feel when I do a drawing or a painting, I, I, I want to make it like a comp composition that has a um, most has some sort of tension in it. Uh, and and, I've, uh, and I relate it very much to, to rhythm, I guess. Uh, I want to have lines that are rhythmic in some, some way, uh, according, uh, relating to it the, themselves, but also to the format. Uh, I want to, to make it both kind of acknowledging the format and at the same time challenge it, challenge it somehow and kind of move a little bit outside of the frame. So this was uh, my intentions when I did this. I just did first the first lines and then I look at it a little bit and then I make some more lines. And I wanted to, to make it uh, quite simple, I guess, also, and not overdo it. Uh, because there's a, a lot of things going on already with just with this um, format that I use with the filler and the cracks. Uh, so you don't really have to add so much, I feel to get an interesting image. Yes. So I will take this off now and uh, then you can look at uh, work number two. So this is number 321, Recipsa, and here is three pegs. And this is a little bit more complicated, as you can see. I made a more of a different kind of a sweeping movement here. So you have a kind of centralized shape, I guess. Almost a little bit like a head, but that was not an in intention an intention of mine and some uh, try to kind of uh, counteract it a little bit with other things going on but then I felt that I okay now I, now I stop this is this is how it turned out and also when I do this the, the filler is wet and it's like drawing in in, uh, in uh, wet sand or something and it's quite different from how it actually looks when it's finished so I have to kind of just trust that it's going to be good in the end, I just do something and I can't really, really perceive how it's going to be when I uh, have gray filler inside and I sand it off. A lot of the, ex uh, the final expression just is um, only revealed uh, in the final stage of the artworks. Yes, and let's move on to the next one. Number 322 with a sipsa. Here you can see four pegs. This is a more of a dissolved composition, I guess, kind of moving a little bit all around the place. And in a way, I feel this um, um, reference to music, I think, is kind of interesting. You almost like you have kind of uh, musical sheet somehow and how or a, what they call it a score a musical score so almost in a way yeah okay shall we look at the last one Number 323, Res Ipsa. 
this works I kind of uh, I had the, of course I did I did uh, uh, two works before that I called them um, uh, dotted lines that were made with a similar tool like this this is where I had the idea and they have um, many pegs like a comb uh, so I was kind of making one this that idea was kind of I had first of a, a dotted line uh, that I kind of related to contract and stuff and then I kind of just used it to comb and draw a, a striped pattern over the whole um, field um, but uh, so I wanted to do something with that but maybe something more loose and more rhythmic and more uh, complex in a way maybe I think I'm gonna uh, take all the works down and put them on the floor now and then I'm gonna um, we can see them all together and then I'm gonna do take the camera off the, the tripod and, and show you some close-ups then and we can finish there I guess okay so let's make some space here studio is quite big but this wall is not so big in the frame maybe sorry about that yeah here it is I have to I think I have to just stand behind the camera here so you can see the whole thing yeah I'm gonna take the, um, the camera off the tripod now uh, and go and uh, let give you some close-ups Sorry, my mic is, of course, getting stuck in a tripod. Okay, here you see the works from the side. And we can maybe shake out some close-ups here. You see the frame and the cracks that the filler is quite raw even though it looks uh, very graphical from the graphic from the side from the from a, a bit of far uh, far away the first yeah so I'm gonna put the camera back try not to trip on the wire buyer, wires here it these four works made with this tool so thank you for watching and uh, good night
and have a, a nice weekend.